If you notice just how steep the wall is right here, yeah, and then it goes up like this, you got to keep in mind the mountains around here are 10 to 12,000 feet high. Yes. They're not like the little low hills we have around here. Now one of the points that I would like to make just as we're looking at this, you can see that where this photograph was taken, mm -hmm. that the eye is still quite a bit below this trestle height here. Mm -hmm. When you're standing here in the layout, we're going to be up here. Okay, we're mm -hmm. going to be about eye high. To, yep. to there. So when you raise your perspective up like this, what that actually does is take this and lower it down so you can actually see more of what's behind. You have a second picture there of this, this valley back here with mountains. Yep. Always. And that's a really critical one. There it is. There it is there. So this is that same hill. Yeah, that's what I was looking so, at. So you're going to get that hill. Yep. Okay, there will be some blue at the top, but it'll disappear as this becomes solid. Yeah. Okay, and then what I'm going to also do, because we have that funny joining section on the other side, I'm also going to give you just a tiny bit of blue uh, on that far side over there so it matches up. I have no problem with sky up along the top. Yeah, well it's not going to go all the way along. It's only going to start about here. Yeah, and then have it curved down yeah. at the end. Yeah, I, I mean, will. I'm not happy with that yeah. end, but it's... So what, what I per perceive is this, this line here will be there, right? Uh -huh. This sharp rock craggy thing that you see down here. So here's the line here. That'll be the foreground line, I'll call it. Mm -hmm. Then this one here will be the background line. Yep. And then there's this little rocky line in the back here. But as you can see, there's a V mm -hmm. down towards the trestle. So you, that V will appear right in the center there. Yeah, that's fine. More to the left. Is that's that, are you yep. okay with that? I'm, <clears throat> I'm fine with that. The only thing I want to emphasize is the, the, the height and steepness of that part of the hill. That's no problem. We'll and do that. The rest of it we can play with uh, yeah. as we go along. When you look at this photograph, though, you can see that this is on a 30 degree angle, mm -hmm. roughly. And that's uh, something that painters should realize that uh, even though this one's much more steep, that's your rocky crag. When you look at your hills, they're generally about this angle, 30 to 30 percent. Yep. So we're we're going to be a little steeper than that, just because of of the fact that there's not enough room, and there is in this spot here, there's no backdrop piece. If if there had been some backdrop right along there, I would have had that 30 degree line. Yeah, I still want to build that up fairly high. Yeah. And put a lot of trees on. Because don't forget you have State Highway 145 mm -hmm. going across there too. Yeah. But when you when you look at your your picture here, okay, mm -hmm. and you look at the depth of your trestle, okay, there's your depth of your trestle, and you can imagine it there. Yep. And then, so you're looking at just over twice as high to that ridge line. Yep. Okay? Yep. So there's going to be a little bit of selective, uh, um, what do they call it? Uh, selective compression. Compression on this, but, but yeah, nevertheless, no. we'll do something with it. And I noticed that the colors in this photograph, the rock is much more gray. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have to play the rock according to what I have. You're yeah, using was... red, so I'm going to have some red in it yeah. to continue the color scheme. But it is definitely gray all through here. It's, all, it's also 2,000. You can redo all your rock. It's also 2,000 miles away, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Yeah. I was thinking about adding 50 feet to the length of the basement, but I kind of thought the neighbor would get a little upset with my trains running in his basement. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so let's get to work. Ten Notice total. how much room I had when I was in there, and there's not a lot of room now. Yeah, I had to go on a diet. I lost 50 pounds in the last year, so I could fit in here specifically to do this job. It's kind of the thing you have to do for model railroading, you know. So guys, take heed. If you've got this a bit of a problem, it's time to start working on it, or you'll never get your backdrops done. <laughs> you thought we were crazy, eh? Yeah. <laughs> We'll do anything to get the job done right. All right, so here we are with my nose to the thing. Now, when you got a backdrop, from if you look at the top of the roof to the track level here, there is going to be some scenery up in here, some real stuff. So really, you're looking at a distance between here and here. The rule of thumb is you only want to have about two-thirds. 
but we are going to do some uh, cheating a bit and go a little higher here. It's just because it's an unusual spot and Bill wants to make sure that there's high rocks and cliffs. That's what I'm looking at. All right, so, but the, that doesn't change where the horizon line is. No. You, so, you, have, you, you do have to keep in mind that the mountains around here are relatively yeah. new. All right, they're, they're not like the mountains around here that have been through a couple of ice ages and everything else. So. Yeah. So you so want it rough but, and you want it coarse. So when you see this horizon line, Bill, it's going to be uh, covered over by your rock because you, you know, obviously the horizon is down behind yep. your rock. Yep. So the horizon line typically is eye high. Yep. So I'm just going to draw here with my clouds, I call them. Ooh, that's pretty flexible. That's a piece of that new masonite crap. Roughly where I see the horizon line. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just scrub in some, and this is again going to be covered by the landforms, but for now it's providing cirrus clouds. Now people have asked before, how come I don't do the big white fluffies? Is because it's very important that your eye is not drawn to these clouds because it's not the important part of your layout. The important part of your layout is the track work, locomotives and rolling stock. So all this wispiness here is just there to uh, provide a little bit of depth and understanding that you've got a sky. And I, I, when I do these clouds, I don't make them like little round balls, and I do not put them in a in a in a formal, formative way. I, I try to make them very random. It's important that it's random. It's either that, or I'll have a look that I would call the look of engineers, where everything's in perfect little rows. By doing them long horizontal, you end up just making the layout look bigger. And as they say, a lot of this is going to be covered up by rock, and stonework, that sort of thing. But again, it's just to give it the Mark One eyeball look. Suck it in, Chris. You can move it. So that uh, right about here is your horizon line. It's important to have that horizon line because it does it makes sure that everything flows properly once you do the painting. Uh, here comes the challenging part. It gets narrower and narrower, doesn't it, Bill? <laughs> and that, <clears throat> that's an elevator. I can't take it out. I'll pass that to you. No, I'm going to go around. I guess I should have done some more deep knee bends. Holy shit. Excuse me. Just remember now, model railroading is fun. Watch your head. Oh, dear. <laughs> Now you can pull up on the uh, on the bench work and that it'll take your weight. All right. I've stood on it. And you said I wouldn't fit. Yeah, but you're not doing much dancing. <laughs> well, that's okay. So the horizon line's going to be right around here somewhere. Yeah, that looks about right. A little bit of cirrus cloud up here. Now you should really scrub this to thin up the paint so it's not as bright. It'll dry a little bit lighter so it's okay to have some volume to it.
And now we got a B-52 coming out of this thing. <laughs> Wrong era, isn't it? Yeah, been around a long time. We could probably get away with it. Some brightness in that cloud there. So, all right, so I'll for now, it. I'm going to work just on this section, and then we'll deal with that other section. You can't paint left-handed? Oh, I can. Yeah, I'm ambidextrous, actually. That's because when I was in grade one, my kindergarten, or my first grade teacher, Mrs. Wakajiji, slapped my wrist every time I tried my left hand to draw. So I ended up learning to uh, do stuff on both, using both hands. I can say that now because I don't think Mrs. Wakajiji is with us anymore. It was many years ago in Ottawa here actually. Okay. Alrighty. Next color to add to this.